Baie welkom aan allemaal op die Pinksterdag wat ons vandaag vier die Bijbel sê vir ons en die hoop beskaam nie omdat die liefde van God in ons harte uitgestort is dier die Heilige Geest wat aan ons gegee is. En die liefde en die hoop vier ons ook vandaag wat uitgestort is elke week ook in die kerk dier die verkondiging van die woord en die kracht van die Heilige Geest. So baie welkom en ek vraag dat onze geseende eredienst saam mag hee. Die kerkraad het ook die volgende afkondigings. Um, ten eerste, vandag is die, dit voorbereiding voor die Heilige Nachtmaal, wat, die, wat als die Heere wil, volgende zondag, 27 mei, in die ochtenddienst gevier zal worden. Lidmate wordt opgeroep om hulle in die komende week hierop voor te bereiden. Die kerkraad, die kerkraad versoek ook die lidmate wat verhinder zal worden om die nachtmaal bij te wonen om in die komende week hul wijksouderling of wijksdiaken hiervan in kennis te stel. Ten tweede, die overgaves is vandaag bestem vir hulpbehoevende theologische studenten en vir hulpbehoevende kerken. Volgende week is die overgaves bestem vir die diakonie, sochtens aan die nachtmaal en dan vir die sending. Ten derde, die jaarlijkse vergadering van die kerkraad en gemeente oor die begroting en ander sake wordt gehou als die Heere wil, dinsdag 22 mei om 8 uur. Vanaf half 7, nee, half 8, 1930, zal die gemeente dienstcommissie beschikbaar wees voor die beantwoording van vraag oor finansies. En dan is daar twee afkondigings op verzoek. Ten eerste... Die dinsdag kleingroepie nooi die gemeente uit na een sop en broekie eten onmiddellijk na die aanddienst vanavond in die kerksaal. Dit begin met praise and worship. Ons sal psalms en skrifbreimings gaan sing. Sop en broekies gaan bedien word. En dan ten tweede, die grifmede laarskool bel wil nooi allemaal hartelijk uit om op maandagochtend 21 mei, dus morgenochtend, Saam te kom deel in die paas tot pinkster sang en muziekprogram in die jaarlijkse min, mintelegging. Dit begin om 10 uur in die kerkgebouw. Tot zover die afkondigings van die kerkraad en op verzoek. Kom ons staan en dan beleid ons ons afhankelijkheid af van die Heere. Elke christen belei dat ons hulp is in die naam van die Heere wat hemel en aarde gemaakt het. Amen. Ontvang die seengroet van jullie God. Genade vir jullie en vrede van God onze Vader in die Heere Jezus Christus. Amen. Kom ons sing in antwoord op die seengroet en in voorbereiding vir die dienst van lied 430 Kom skepper gees.
Ons lees hier elke zondag die wet van ons God en Heere. En die wet in die Oude Testament was op twee tablieten van steen geskryf. Maar in die Nieuw Testament, toen die Heilige Gees uitgestort is, is die wet geskryf op elke christene se hart. zodat so ons ook dier hom en in Christus kan leven volgens die wet. So kom ons lees hier die wet en dan terwijl ons hier die wet lees, kan ons ook bid vir die Heilige Gees wie hier die wet in ons harte en op ons harte skryf. Ons lees die wet vir oogen van Exodus 20. Toe het God al, hy, al hy die woorde gespreek en gesê, Ek is die Heere jou God, wat jou uit Egypte land, uit die slavenhuis uitgeleid het. Hy mag geen ander goede voor my aangezig hen nie. Hy mag vir jou geen gesnede beeld of enige gelijkenis maak van wat boe in die hemel is, of van wat onder op die aarde is, of van wat in die waters onder die aarde is nie. Jy mag jou voor hulle nie neerbuig en hulle nie die nie. Want ek, die Heere, jou God, is die jaloese God, wat die misdaad van die vaders besoek aan die kinders, aan die derde en aan die vierde geslag van die wat my haat. Maar ek bewys barmhartigheid aan duisende van die wat my lief het en my geboeie onderhou. Jy mag die naam van die Heere, jou God, nie eidelik gebruik nie. Want die Heere sal die een wat sy naam eindelijk gebruik nie ongestraf laat bly nie. Gedenk die sabbatdag, dat jy dit heilig. Ses dag moet jy arbeid en al jou werk doen, maar die sevende dag is die sabbat van die Heere jou God. Dan mag jy geen werk doen nie. Jy of jou seen of jou dochter, of jou diensknecht of jou diensmaagd, of jou vee of jou vreemdeling wat in jou poorte is nie. Want in zes dagen het die Heere die hemel en die aarde gemaakt, die see en alles wat daarin is. En op die zevende dag het hij gerus. Daarom het die Heere die sabbatdag geseen en dit geheilig. Eer jou vader en jou moeder, dat jou daar verleng mag word in die land wat die Heere jou God aan jou gee. Je mag niet doodslaan nie. Je mag niet echt breek nie. Je mag niet stil nie. Je mag geen valse getuienis tegen jou naaste spreek nie. Je mag nie jou naaste se huis begeer nie. Je mag nie jou naaste se vrou begeer nie, of sy diensknecht, of sy diensmaagd, of sy os, of sy esel, of iets wat van jou naaste is nie. Tot so ver die wet van onze God, kom ons antwoord op die wet, om te sing van Psalm 51 vers 5, waar ons ook vraag vir die Heilige Gees om ons nieuw harte te gee. Psalm 51 vers 5 
ons het weer die geleentheid om voor die skepper van hemel en aarde te kom in die heilige gees om ons gebede voor om te bring en ons lof en prijs. Um, voor ochend sal ons bid vir amal uh, die ons broer Anna Visser geken het. Hy was oorlede hierdie week en hy was, lang, uh, hy was baie lang een lidmaat van ons gemeente hier ook. So baie mense ken hom. En dan sal ons ook bid vir die Boesenkool familie. Um, in Aard Boesenkool in Johannesburg wat is ook oorlede en hij is een broer van ons broer Henk Boesenkool. En dan wil die diakens ook bid dat ons gewoon dank en uh, die Heere loof ook voor die gaves wat die Heere um, geskenk het dier die diakonie. So ons kan ook die Heere daarvoor dankie sê. Kom ons bid saam. Onze Vader, vandaag sê ons baie, baie dankie dat u sien aan u rechterhand sit en dat u die gees van u sien gestuur het in ons harte. So dat ons voor ochend voor een drie keer heilige God mag kom, want die gees bring ons daar, die gees verenig ons met ons Heer Jesus Christus, wat in die hemel sit, die gees skryf die wet op ons harte, zodat so ons dit kan uitleef, Ons besef, hier die week, dat ons baie keer nie geluister het nie. Dat ons baie keer probeer weg gaat loop het. Dat ons baie keer ons naaste gehad het. En u gehad het. Heere, was die sonde weg en die bloed van Christus wat ons gedoen het, maar ook wat ons nie gedoen het nie. Wat ons moest doen reinig ons in die bloed van Christus en laat die gees ons was in die bloed, zodat so ons voor u mag kom als die gemeenschap van die heiliges. En dat vir ochend ons mag bly wees in die kracht van die heilige gees en die werk van Jezus Christus. Heere, die gees is ook die gees van troos, wat bij ons staan, door die moeilike tye in die lewe, ons vraag dat u ook die kerk sal troos, as hulle lei, as hulle dier baie moeilike tye gaan. Heer, hierdie week is ons weer gefeest met, met die dood. As ons hoor van ons broer Ona Visser, wat hierdie week goed lede is in Pretoria, dan besef ons weer die vergankelijkheid van ons leven. Heere, ons bid dat u allemaal wat hom goed geken het sal troos, sal hulle vrede gee, sal vir hulle genade, genadig wees, so dat hulle ook allemaal kan Rus in die evangelie. Die evangelie van een herskepping, een nieuwskepping. Die opstanding van die lewe. Heere, ons bid ook vir ons broer en sister Henk en Janette Boesekool. Ook as ons broer Henk, een broer, moes begrawe ook. Ons bid dat u ook met hom sal wees en dat u ook hom sal troos met die heilige gees en krachtig en sy hard werk in die harte van die rest van die familie, wat ons broer goed geken het. Wie is nou by die familie ook, is speciaal. Heere ons, bid vir amal hoe ook in die kerk wat lei, met allerhande goede, 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 Heere ons, bid dat jy met hulle sal wees, en na by hulle sal wees, dat ons op mekaar mag steen, als een familie, ons broers en sisters, 
dat ons voor mekaar mag weet, dat ons altijd daar voor mekaar sal wees. Heere, ons sien dit ook in die diakonie, die, opperga- die offergaves wat hierdie kerk ook gegeet het, van wat u vir hulle gegee het. Heere, ons dank en loof u daarvoor, ons bid ook vir hierdie goeders, want dit is altijd een geestelike ding. En ons dank u so baie hiervoor, en ons prijs en loof u dat ook so kan ons die werk van u heilige geest sien. Heere, ons, le- ons hoor van u woord dat die heilige geest werk dier die prediking van die woord. So ons bid, heilige geest, dat u ook nou sal werk. Dat u elke hart en elke verstand sal rig op u woord en die leesing van u woord na nou sien van handelinge en dan sien u ook die prediking. Laat het werk en laat het ons elk een verander. Ons dank je so baie dat ons u woord mag lees en dat u u self bekend gemaakt het dier daar die woord. Ons bid nou vir u die eredienst, wees met ons, in Jezus naam. Amen. Die skrifleesing vir verochend is van handelinge 1 vers 1 tot 11 en handelinge 2 vers 1 tot 13. Die tweede een sal ons tekst wees. Ek nooi nou ons broer Thijs van der Hout voor en toe om dit voor te lees vir ons. Ons lees saam uit handelinge 1 vanaf vers 1. En dit is die woord van God. Die eerste verhaal, Theophilus, het ek opgestel oor alles wat Jezus begin doen en leer het. Tot op die dag dat hy opgeneem is. Nadat hy aan sy apostels wat hy uitverkies het, die hy die heilige geest bevel gegee het, aan wie hy ook, na sy leide, om levend vertoon het, dier baie kentekens terwijl hy gedurende 40 dae aan hulle verskyn het en oor die dinge van die koninkryk van God ges, ge, gespreek het. En toe hy nog met hulle saam was, het hy hulle bevel gegee om nie van Jerusalem af weg te gaan nie, maar om te wacht op die belofte van die Vader, wat jylle, het hy gesê, van my gehoor het. Want Johannes het wel met water gedoop, maar jylle sal met die Heilige Geest gedoop word, nie lang na hierdie dag nie. Die wat by mekaar gekom het, vraag om toe en sê, Heere, gaan u in hierdie tyd die koninkryk van Israel weer oprig? En hy antwoord hulle, dit kom jylle nie toe om die tye of geleentede te weet wat die vader dier sy eie mag bepaal het nie. Maar jylle sal kracht ontvang wanneer die heilige geest oor jylle kom. En jylle sal my getuies wees in Jerusalem sowel as in die hele Judea en Samaria en tot aan die uit, uiterste van die aarde. En nadat hy dit gesê het, is hy opgeneem terwijl hulle dit sien, en een wolk het om voor hulle oor weggeneem. En toe hulle nog stip na die hemel kyk terwijl hy weggaan, staan daar twee manne in wit kleren by hulle wat sê, Galileese manne, waarom staan julle en kyk na die hemel? Hierdie Jesus wat, jylle op, wat van jylle opgeneem is in die jimmel, sal net so kom, soos jylle om na die jimmel sien wegvaar het. Dan lees ons verder hoofstuk 2 van vers 1. En toe die dag van Pinksterfeest aangebreek het, was hulle allemaal eendrachtig by mekaar. En daar kom skielik uit die jimmel een geluid soos van een geweldige rukwind, en dit het die hele huis gevul waar hulle ge- gewees het. Toe is hulle dier hulle tonge gesien soos van vier, wat hulle self verdeel en op elkeen van hulle gaan sit. En hulle is allemaal vervul met die heilige gees 
en het begin spreek in ander tale, soos die geest aan hulle gegeet om uit te spreek. En daar het in Jerusalem jode gewoon, godsdienstige mannen, uit elke nasie wat onder die hemel is. En toe hier die geluid kom, het die menigte saamgestroom en was in die war. Want elkeen het gehoor hoe hulle in sy eie taal spreek. En hulle was allemaal verbaas en verwonderd en sê vir mekaar, is allemaal wat daar spreek dan nie Galileers nie? En hoe hoor ons hulle elkeen in ons eie taal waarin ons geboren is? Parters en meders en elamite en die inwoners van Mesopotamie, Judea en Cappadocia, Pontus en Asie, Frigie en Pamphylie, Egypte en die streke van Libië by Sirene, en Romeine wat hier vertoef, Jode en Jode genote, Kretense en Arabiere, ons hoor hulle in ons eie taal oor die groot dade van God spreek. En hulle was allemaal verbaas en radeloos, en sê die een vir die ander, wat kan dit toch wees? Maar ander het gespot en gesê, hulle is vol soet wijn. Tot so ver die skriflesing. Kom ons antwoord ook op die skriflesing van die selfde story wat ons van kan sing uit skrifbreiming 13 vers 1 tot 3. Die tekst vir verochend kom van handelinge 2, Acts 2, vers 1 tot 13. Ek uh, lees dit nog een keer met julle, so dat ons bybels daar oople, en dan kan ons allemaal saamvolg in die preek. Ek uh, herhaal dit weer in die Engels. Acts 2, and we're going to read from verse 1 to 13. This is the word of God. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, 
because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontius and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. Geliefde gemeente van ons Heer Jezus Christus, die Heilige Gees. Hoe groot is die glorie van sy werk en die majesteit van sy mag, wanneer hy dode mense levendig maak. Wanneer hy die wil buig, die verstand verlig en die hart versag. The Holy Spirit. He is the one that anoints each one of us as prophet, priest, and king. He is the one that changes my heart and every heart of every Christian that has ever lived. He is the one that will work this morning through the preaching of the gospel. He is the one that lives in this church and unites us as brothers and sisters with each other in Christ our Lord. And today, we celebrate the day when he was poured out on the church. A day that would forever change the world. O, wat er verwachting was daar en daar die dag nie. Tien dag gelede, voor hierdie gebeurtenis, het Jezus opgevaar na die hemel as koning van die helal. The last days were upon them. They had been told to wait in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit. And that's what they do. They waited and they prayed. We read in Acts 1 verse 14, they all joined together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. They returned to Jerusalem, they gathered together, and they prayed. They didn't go out and preach the gospel. They waited for the one that would make the gospel effective. The church realized they were absolutely powerless, without power, without the power of God, the Holy Spirit. You see, a church that prays together is a church that knows only God can do it. Only God can change us. And unless they waited for God, they knew nothing would happen. They went back to Jerusalem, they listened to Jesus Christ, and they waited. Unless the Lord builds the house, its laborers labor in vain. And then the day came. Ten days they waited, they prayed, they praised. And then I preached to you the word of God under the following theme, the Spirit of Christ comes to dwell in those who believe. We're going to look at the signs of the Tiekens Eerste, the wind, the fire, and the taller, languages, and then second, the results. The people who were amazed, the disciples who were changed, and then the some who ridicule. So, it is the tekens, the wind, the fire, and the taller. Ons lees in vers 1 van hoofstuk 2, when the day of Pentecost came, now, I will not there stop. Penta means 50. 
Dit was 50 dagen na die paasfeest. In the Passover, the Israelites celebrated their freedom from Egypt. And what happened 50 days after they celebrated that? They came to the mountain where God spoke to them and wrote down his law for them through a mediator called Moses, a middle law. God had hulle 50 dae later die wet gegee. Now, what did we celebrate 50 days ago? The death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He freed us not from Egyptian slave masters, but the slave master of our own hearts, of sin, of Satan, of this world. And just like he led those people out of Egypt to Sinai to reveal himself, to show who he is, what kind of God he is, so 50 days later, after freeing us, he reveals himself to us again. Not indirectly anymore. Not through a man, Moses, not through a mediator, but directly. He comes to write the law on our hearts with the Holy Spirit. He comes to live with us, in us. So we read, when the day of Pentecost came, this was a special day, they were all together in one place. They knew it was Pentecost. They didn't know that's when the Holy Spirit was going to come. Not for sure. But they were all together. One of the, the takens, one of the manifestations of the church of Jesus Christ is an absolute profound unity, a, a togetherness that nothing can tear apart. And one of the primary means that the Holy Spirit always works is in relationship, in community, when the church is together. Week in, week out. Through the preaching of, of this book, through prayer, through praise. He unites us here in a profound way with Jesus Christ who lives in heaven. And because we are here united with him, we don't have a choice but to be united with each other. You see, the elders, the pastor, Christians desire that we come together because this is where he promises to meet with you, to be with you, to speak to you, so that you may answer him, not just here, but with your life when you go from here. So they were all together, probably praying together, and suddenly their prayer meeting Halabitir was interrupted with a divine interruption. We read in verse 2, Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Suddenly. Skilak. Hierdie dag het skilak op hulle afgekom. Soos een verrassing. Selfs al het hulle daarop gewaag. Is dit nie hoe ek ooit sal wees as Jesus Christus weer terugkom? Suddenly, skielak, sal die woord wat ons dan sal gebruik om dit te beskryf. Selfs as ons voor hom wag al 2000 jaar, ons weet hy kom, ons weet verseker hy kom, maar dit sal skielak wees. Suddenly, the sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house. Here it on the first teken. Wind. Now, anyone that's lived in the Cape longer than a year knows what the sound of a violent wind can sound like. I've been here less than a year 
and I've heard some pretty loud winds. It's a similar effect with, with a tornado. It sounds like a massive freight train is just moving through your house, shaking it. And, but it says this wind comes from heaven. It comes down. The sound of the wind comes from heaven. It means that heaven has come down to earth on this day. This is the day that the kingdom of heaven invaded the kingdom of earth and established the kingdom of heaven upon it. They were clothed from on high, is what the Bible says. God came down. He never left since. Why when, though? Of all the things the Lord could have used on this day, at that moment, why did he use the wind? Well, the Holy Spirit, the Elegias, is characterized by the wind throughout Scripture. It's interesting that in the New Testament, in the Hebrew and, I mean, in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew and New Testament, in the Greek, wind and spirit have the same word, ruach and pneuma. In John 3, Jesus says this to Nicodemus, He's talking about being born again. And Jesus says this, The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it is coming from or where it is going, so it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Now, I'm, I'm guessing that none of us have ever seen the Holy Spirit. In fact, I, I, I know you haven't seen the Holy Spirit. But any Christian that's sitting here today knows its effect. You can't see it. Just like the wind. We don't see the wind, but we see its effects here. You see the trees on the coast being molded and bend over the years in a certain direction. Just so the Spirit continues to work and slowly molds and bends our wills, our intellect, our heart, our emotions toward Christ. He bends it so that we're no longer looking toward death, we're no longer looking toward sin, but we're going the other way, towards life, towards Christ. He's giving new life. Another reason that the wind comes with the Spirit is omdat die Heilige Geest die awesome van God is. So as it says in Genesis 2, that God breathed into them the breath of life. That word for breath there is the same word for spirit. Do you notice a similarity there? Life? God breathing life? Life was at the beginning, breathed into us humans, in Adam. We rejected that life. We said, thanks, but no thanks. We'll take death. We'll do our own thing. We don't need you, God, for life. Christ came. The way, the truth, and the life. Him who has life in himself. He died. Took up his life, sent the Holy Spirit. Why? So that we may be restored to life. What he is doing here is nothing less than recreating us so that we might live eternally, flesh and blood, for God, for life. Jesus says, I came so that they may have life and have it to the full.
Hy tref ons dus niks minder as die herskepping aan nie, gevolg dier een nieuwe leven begin. Een leven wat moendlik gemaakt is dier Jezus' opvaring na die Vaders rechterhand. God was coming to earth. No wonder it was a violent wind. It shook that place. God was coming in glory to live with his people again. The tweet taken is fear. So we have verse 2, the wind, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came. And then verse 3, verse 3, said that they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. Okay, ons weer die wind, hoe kom die vier? Hier vind ons weer a Bible se beeld. In die Bible is vier um, a syver in de dank. Vergelijk met Zachariah 13 vers 9 waar dit sê, Dan sal ek die derde deel in die vier bring, en hulle smelt soos een mens silver smelt, en hulle toets soos een mens goud toets. Hulle sal my naam aanroep, en ek sal hulle verhoor. Ek sê, dit is my volk, en hulle sal sê, die Heere, my God. Malachi noem hom ook, die vuur van die smelter. So ons het gevra, hoekom kan God, kan God met mense woon? How in the world can God dwell with us? How can he be here? Knowing what we know about our own hearts, how can the three times holy God meet with us every week? With us, who have broken his commands. Because of Jesus, the sin bearer. You see, in the Old Testament, God's glory, he left his people because of sin. He could not live with them because of sin. The glory left the temple. And now what's happening is the glory is returning to the temple of God, not made with hands. He's coming back. He is back, building a temple, much more magnificent than Solomon's temple ever was, built with living stones, purifying each one of us, convicting us, turning us toward Jesus. Because of Jesus' work, his holy presence is now coming to dwell with his people. To purify us like silver, like gold, to make us beautiful again. This temple building process is a slow process. But the Spirit doesn't give up once he comes. He convicts of sin and points us in the direction of the cross. He says, look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. You know you sinned. Look to Jesus. It's no wonder then that when Peter is done preaching and the Spirit is working through this very first sermon, the people cry out in verse 37. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? They're convicted. Everybody that heard that first sermon was cut to the heart. They were face to face with having crucified the Lord of glory, their Messiah, who they had waited for for so many years. What shall we do? They were face to face with the eternal fires of hell for what they have done. They realize it and ask, what shall we do? But Peter gives this word of comfort, repent. In other words, turn around. The Holy Spirit convicts them, breaks them, and gives them a new direction. There is hope. The Spirit says there's forgiveness in the name of Jesus Christ. This conviction is nothing less than the work of the Holy Spirit, and that new life is also his work. 
Fire is not only a purifying symbol, something that makes us holy, something that takes away the sin that so easily entangles. But in the Old Testament, it's also a symbol of guidance, a symbol of leading us somewhere. You can think of the Old Testament with, with that pillar of fire during the night and the smoke column during the day, leading the people. Or you can think of where God spoke with Moses out of the burning bush, telling them who he is and what he will do. But now the fire is not apart from the people anymore. The fire is not burning on top of that mountain, Mount Sinai, and the people are terrified. What does this fire do? It rests on them. In them. Guiding them. Showing them the way through the desert. Showing them the way to that eternal promised land of rest. Showing us the way to a new creation. He's here. To have fellowship with each one of us. To unite us so that Jesus may have fellowship with each one of us. And then we come to the third sign. We have wind, we have fire, and then in verse 4 we read the third sign. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit enables them. Now, I like what the Afrikaans version says here, Tala. I wish they would have translated this as languages, as the Spirit enabled them. But first of all, it says all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. I love that word, filled. The word literally means here, filled. And an ongoing filledness, if I can say it that way. Not just a one-time filled, but a filled in here to stay full. You see, the Spirit doesn't just come into our hearts just a little bit. Oh, I want to check out how his heart is. Oh, he's not going to make it. Far too sinful. Gone. He does not do that. Not with any one of us. No matter where we have been in life. He comes. He stays. He makes a home. So that Christ may be formed in us. Die woord vir vol, die op a deurlopendheid. Hulle is deurlopend met die heilige geest vir vol. Hy bly vir altyd, hy maak a woning vir ewig. Now for the sign. These are not tongues like we have in 1 Corinthians. But these are languages. Hulle is tale wat hulle in praat. Die woord wat hier gebruik word, is die woord wat ons ons woord, en ek weet nie of dit Afrikaans woord is of nie, dialect, of dialect van kry. So, as ons lees in vers 6, vers 6, daar lees ons, When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language or, or dialect. They were all speaking languages of the known world which people could really understand. We have the same thing in verse 8 where it asks, How is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Why this sign? Well, that's... An easy one. This sign was for us. The gospel's going out to every tongue, tongue, tribe, nation, and language. The gospel is about to explode from this time out, outward toward the whole known world. 
You see, all these Jews were in Jerusalem. They were gathering together for this massive feast day, and they heard the gospel. And what do they do with it? They go back to their homes, to their synagogues around the world, and start sharing it. They say, Jesus is alive. There's hope. So let's look at the results. We looked at the signs, fire, wind, and languages, and what they mean, and now let's look at the results. The people are amazed, the disciples are changed, and the world or some ridicule. So we read in verse 5 and 6, Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. You're going to just imagine what's happening here, right? They're all in this room together. Suddenly, a sound of a massive, violent wind comes. People hear this. They're like, what was that? What was that? They come running. They come check it out. When they come closer, they start hearing their own languages. And they look at these men, and they're like, these are Galileans. These men shouldn't know any other language besides their own native language. People from all over the known world. We have it in verse 9 through 11. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontius, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors of Rome, both Jews and commerce to Judaism, Cretans, Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own language. Literally, the point of this long list is the Bible wants to make perfectly clear that this gospel is starting in Jerusalem, it's going to go to Samaria, but it's not going to stop there. It's going to the ends of the world. It's coming to Cape Town, China, the States, South America. It is going to the remotest places in the world because Jesus Christ is king of all of it. And he has people wherever there are people who are alive. You see how this is kind of like the story of Babel in the Old Testament in reverse? How God is kind of reversing history here. Rather than one language being used to build a city to the glory and majesty of man, you have a ton of different languages here used, uniting in a way to the praise, the glory, and the majesty of God building a new city, the city of God. And it, it shocks the crowds. The crowds are amazed. They don't get the gospel yet. Because in verse 12, they, they're amazed and perplexed. What does this mean? They don't get the gospel. Just because someone is amazed it does not mean that they get the gospel. They need to hear the gospel in order to get the gospel. That happens later in the chapter. Sometimes people can be amazed at the church. They can want to be a part of it, but they don't get it yet. It has to hit us here. It has to cut to the heart. They're not cut to the heart yet. Right now, they're just amazed. They're confused. They're bewildered. In verse 7, we read, Utterly amazed, they ask, Are these not men who are speaking Galileans? Galileans. Dit was soos mense uit die meeste achterlijke plek in Afrika, wat nog nooit een stad groter dan 1000 gesien het nie, wat nou in ander tale begin praat. It's like Rosetta Stone. It's a computer program that, that lets you learn different languages, was somehow just downloaded into their brain, so that they could suddenly talk in these other languages. I hope you see the significance of this. It's not through power or by might or by human wisdom that God is going to change the world. 
It is by what the world thinks is foolish, is stupid. It is the foolishness of God that's the wisdom of man, and the foolishness of man that is the wisdom of God. Ordinary men from Galilee, God would use to begin this world-changing movement. They were not from the center of power. You know, if we chose somebody, we might, we might pick somebody from the centers of power. Washington, Beijing. Back then it would have been Rome. That was a center of power. Use a powerful politician to preach the gospel. People are going to listen to him. Galileans? Or maybe go to the center of learning. Go to the university. Athens, it would have been at that time. Or maybe Egypt, Alexandria. Their library was magnificent. Use somebody intelligent that can debate, that can argue, that knows things about the world and how the world uses. But Galileans? These were ordinary men from backwater Galilee. These were ordinary men like you and me. God, God wees dier hulle aan die wereld dat sy woord sal word nie dier kracht of geweld nie, maar dier my gees. For them, everything changed in that day. You see, before Pentecost, they were self-centered and desired to have positions of great power in the kingdom. You, rem you remember when those two brothers came to Jesus? Actually, they asked their mom to go to Jesus because they were afraid to. So they ask their mom to go to Jesus, and, and their mom has to ask for them, can my son sit on your right hand and on your left when you sit in glory? They were, in a way, motivated by, by ambition, by being at the top. But after Pentecost, after this day, instead of being self-centered, they became Christ-centered. Read some of the sermons in Acts, and there's a whole bunch of them. They're amazing sermons. But it all focuses on the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Their deepest desire was to exalt the name of Jesus, make him great. No longer were they worried about themselves, their own prestige, their own power, how people thought of them. They were concerned about the world and making Christ known in the world. Niks kon in die pad staan van die moed en die dapperheid en sekerheid nie van die disciples. Niks kon hulle vreugde demp nie. Voorheen kon jy hulle vind in klein, voorheen kon jy hulle vind in een klein kamerkie met die deur gesluit. Nou was hulle nie bang om met vrijmoedigheid die groot dade van God te verkondig nie. God alleen verander die hart. I hope you know that we as a church, a church, I guess, without the Holy Spirit, can't do a thing in this city of Belleville. We'll have no lasting impact on this place, on our neighborhoods, except if the Spirit of God changes. We can't even change my own heart. Most of us knows we're sinners. Hopefully everybody does. And try so hard to fix it year in and year out, and somehow we don't succeed. It is by looking to Jesus Christ, and that is exactly what the Holy Spirit does, that we begin to experience a change in ourselves. He changes everything. What people did not get is that these Galileans weren't just Galileans anymore. They were citizens of the kingdom of God, sons and daughters of God Almighty, brothers of Jesus Christ. They were not just ordinary Galileans. What do the disciples share? 
What does it mean when it says they shared the wonders of God in verse 11? We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own language. What were these wonders? Well, I think you can pretty much read Peter's sermon. Maybe you can do that later during lunch. See what that sermon is about. See what wonders they're talking about. Or you can go to what Jesus told the disciples before he ascended, that everything in the scripture was about the events of these days, that Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. This is exactly what Peter is preaching. You see, in the Old Testament, the parents in Deuteronomy were told to tell their children about the wonders of God. We are commanded to tell our children and the world about the wonders of God in Jesus Christ. Why are you here? Why do we come every single Sunday? Seems a little repetitive, doesn't it? Why? Because we need constant reminder of this good news. We need the Holy Spirit to work through this to change our hearts so that we begin to overflow with this news, so that we begin to tell others, and it shapes our lives, our families, our church. The geest van ander die die mense van machteloose, biddeloose, twyfonde en wankelende getuies van moedig, na moedige en doeltreffende diensknachte van die koninkryk. Wat het hierdie verandering te wee gebrang, duidelik die heilige gees. En die heilige gees werk nou. Hy werk dier die predikang, dier sy woord. En ons sien dit ook hier. Die eerste ding wat gebeur, is dat als een preek, ten die heilige gees uitgestort is. Die eerste ding, hy begin preek, Want die heilige geest gaan altyd die prediking vooraf, werk altyd dier en bou altyd daarop voort. Die geest moet die woord gee aan ons. Die geest moet dit bedien. Dit aanbied en dit bewerk in ons hart hierdie week. Wat hier gebeur is een daad van God. Dit is nie een menselike ding wat nou hier in hierdie preek gebeur nie. Al voel het al ook so menselik. So come on, follow their example. Let's pray for the worship. Pray for the weekly preaching of the gospel, for the Holy Spirit to, le- to work in the church. So finally, we come to the last result. The first result was the amazement of the people. They were shocked. They were amazed. They came running. Then we saw how the disciples were changed. And now we end with the third result, opposition ridicule. Very briefly. Where the true preaching of the gospel happens, there will be resistance. Will be. Because we preach in enemy territory. We're stealing from the kingdom of Satan. And we have exactly the same thing here. Ridicule. You read in verse 13, some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. You see, getting made fun of is always just the first step. It progresses from there and usually gets worse. Like you see in this book, it starts here with ridicule. Then it goes to threats, chapter 4, then to imprisonment and whipping, chapter 5, and then you see the death of the first martyr, Stephen, in chapter 7. (laughs) Ridicule is nothing when you believe in Jesus Christ. Imprisonment is nothing. Whipping is nothing. Death is nothing because nothing can separate us from the love of Christ which is in Jesus Christ. So let's speak up while we are still just being ridiculed. Let's not be afraid to be made fun of. 
It is foolishness to the world. If we didn't have the Holy Spirit, we would think what we believe is foolishness. We would think it is dumb to believe it if we did not have the Holy Spirit working in us. The reason we believe it with such conviction is because the Holy Spirit has done a mighty work in us and made us see the wisdom of God. So let's speak up while we are just being ridiculed. Wat moet God is met julle. No, even better. He's in you. And the battle is his. So pray for the Spirit that he might make you see Jesus so clearly on his throne as the living ruler of heaven and earth. And with that vision, you can go out and proclaim his names. Come what Proclaim his name, come what may. That you may be proud and boast in the cross of Jesus Christ. Courageous in your pursuit of the goal that is him. To know him, to love him, to make him known. This is the power of the Holy Spirit in you. I'll end with this illustration from our brother Packer. J.I. Packer. He says the spirit is in a sense like stage lights. Well-placed stage lights flood the stage but are not seen. He is, so to speak, the hidden floodlight shining upon our Savior, Jesus Christ. This is what he does in the preaching. The message of the Holy Spirit is never, look at me. Listen to me. Come to me. Get to know me. It is always look to him. See his glory. Listen to him. Hear his word. Go to him and have life. Get to know him and taste the gift of his joy and his peace. End quote. Oh, beloved, what a day we have today to celebrate. There's nothing that can take our hope away, nothing that can take our love away. What a day to remember. This day of Pentecost is a day that the sun will never set on because his work endears for eternity. Amen. Kom ons staan en sing van die Pinkse belofte uit skrifpreiming 14 in antwoord op die prediking.
Komm uns bitte zusammen. Vader, Seen en Heilige Geest, drie enige God, ons kom voor u aangezig om u te dank. Voor u verlossing. Dat ons in de kracht van de Heilige Geest in Jezus Christus u die Vader mag aanbid. Heilige Geest, ons dank u. U is die Heere van die lewe. Ik was daar in die begin, toen Adam en Eva die leven ontvang het. Heer, in ons vraag dat u ook nou hier sal wees. Kom, skepper gees, en vernieuw die hele skepping. Heer, u het gewerk, die heilige gees, om ons om voor ons, om voor ons hier die boek te gee, die Bijbel. Dit gepraat door die profete en die apostels. Heilige Gees, ons vraag u om door hier die woorden in ons ook te werk. Om ons harte te reinig. Heere, die Gees was daar. Toen Jezus van die dood opgestaan het, die dood oorwin het. En sonde machteloos gemaakt het, vir allemaal wat in hom glo. Heilige Gees, ons vraag dat u ons ook sal bevry hierdie dag. Van die machte, van die sonde en die dood, waarvoor mens so bang kan wees. Heilige Gees, ons advocaat, ons onderwijzer. U is met ons. Elk een van ons, elk een van ons, staan langs ons, werk in ons, dier ons alledaagse leven. Heilige Gees, ons kan nie wacht nie tot, u, tot, tot, u, tot, tot die dag wanneer u werk volmaakt is. wanneer daar een nieuw skepping is, wanneer ons niet meer hier die strijd hoef te strijd nie. Gee ons moed, om te volhard, tot die dag, zelfs is ons so moeg, en afgebroken maak ons heel, want ons weet, dat die kracht, is volmaakt hier ons zwakheid. Ons bid het, in die naam van onze Heer Jezus Christus, wie die Heilige Geest voor ons gewijs het. Amen. Ons het nou die geleentheid om ons offergaves te gee, vir die Heere die offergaves vir ochend is vir hulpbehoevende theologische studenten, is die eerste een, en die tweede een is vir hulpbehoevende kerke. Na die offergave sal ons ons Amen lied sang, Psalm 143 vers 7 en 8. Ons sal dit doen staande.
ontvang die Seen van God en gaan huis toe in vrede. Die genade van die Heere Jezus Christus, die liefde van God en die gemeenschap van die Heilige Geest zijn met jullie allemaal.